In this tutorial, we will create a damping oscillator on Physio Designer. This is very simple model, so this is also good to see to know the basic usage of Physio Designer. A motion equation of a pendulum oscillation can be simply described by the first equation in the slide. By adding a damping term parameterized by k and linearizing the nonlinear force term, we obtain the generalized equation. When k is larger than zero, the amplitude of the oscillation decreases, in other words, the energy stored in the oscillation dissipates. For numerical computation, we derive the two differential equations with the first derivatives. Now let's create a model of the damping oscillator on Physio Designer. The equations that we need to implement are these two ordinary differential equations. Let's set the parameter k is 1, and the initial values for x and v are 10. From now, we will show the modeling process on a movie. At first we create a module in which we can define equations and parameters. Click an icon on a toolbar to create one module. Let's set the name as Damping Oscillation, and click OK button. Then we define physical quantities in the module. Right click on the module, then a context menu pops up. Select Edit Physical Quantity in the menu, then a dialog shows up. Here let's create the first physical quantity. Select Type at first, now it is State, and then Set Name. Let's put X here. Next we need to define the initial value for X. Move to Initial Value tab and set x equals 10. Let's define the dynamics of x, that is, define the ordinary equation. Move to implementation tab. The equation is very simple, dx dt equals v. Here v is not defined yet, so a dialog pops up and says that v is not defined yet, and asks do you want to create it automatically now? Clicking yes button, creates a physical quantity named v. Then, we will modify physical quantity V. On the table, selecting the entry of V, you will see the detailed information of V. Now go to the basic setting tab, change the type from variable parameter to state, and go to implementation tab to edit the definition of the dynamics. This time it is, dV dt equals minus k times V minus x. Here again the definition includes undefined physical quantity k. So the dialog again pops up asking you if you want to create it now. Click Yes button to create the entry of K. Finally don't forget to set the initial value of V. It is 10. OK. We move to the entry of K. On the table, we change the type of K from variable parameter to static parameter at basic setting tab. The value of K can be set at implementation tab. Now it is 1. All settings were done here. Let's click OK button to close the dialog. Let's save the model into a file. Click the save icon on the toolbar. It asks you the name of the model. Any name is OK. Here for example we can set it as damping oscillation. Clicking set button, a file choose opens. Set the file name and save. All right. Now we finished to create the damping oscillator model. Next let's run a simulation. From the menu bar, select Simulation, and Flint, in the submenu. Flint is a simulator of PHML models. The window of Flint will show up. The model is already loaded on Flint. Set the simulation length. Here it is 40, and simulation time step 0.005. Click Run button at right bottom corner to execute a simulation. To observe the dynamics, go to Detail, and View. Drag and drop the variable name from the leftmost text box to Y1 text box. Then the curve of the variable is drawn in the central panel. X axis is time, by default. It is also possible to use one of variables for X axis. Drag and drop one of variable names to the abscissa text box. You can also return a variable to the leftmost text box to remove the graph from the central panel. Now you can observe the dynamics very clearly. The orbit starting from 1010 falls into the origin spirally, 
meaning the oscillation ceased. A plane spanned by two variables is called a phase plane. A plot on the phase plane is helpful to observe the dynamics of the system. Let's observe the dynamics under different situations. Let's change the value of k. Go back to the mean window of Flint and go parameters tab. There is a table of static parameter type physical quantities and initial values of state type physical quantities. You can change values of these physical quantities in this table. Double click the expression column of the entry k, then the cell becomes editable. Let's use 0.2, for example. This means there is less resistance force around the pendulum. Clicking run button again to execute a simulation. Again drag and drop the variable names to y1 text box. This time dumping oscillation lasts a little bit longer than the previous case. Move x to abscissa. This time there is more clear spiral, meaning it takes a longer time to fall into the origin. Let's change the value of k again. This time we will use minus 0.3. Then run a simulation again. Let's check the dynamics. This time, it diverged. Because k equals minus 0.3 means that there is a negative resistance around the pendulum, that is, each time pendulum swings, it gains energy. OK, next, just out of curiosity, let's try the situation with k equals 0. This means there is no resistance force around the pendulum, hence the pendulum should be able to continue oscillation forever. The waveform seems that there is no attenuation or augmentation in the amplitude of oscillation, but actually if you observe it on the phase plane, you may notice that there is a slight change in the amplitude every swing. But why? This is caused by the numerical error of the numerical integration. Let's try to use more precise simulation time step. Change the value to 0 0.0001. Then the size of the simulation data file becomes 50 times larger. To compensate it, let's reduce the number of points to save in the data file by changing the sampling rate. Set it 20, meaning that one data point every 20 points is saved in the data file. OK, now run a simulation. You see, the orbit of the state point on the phase plane draws a perfect circle. It means that there is no changes in the oscillation amplitude. That is k equals zero, no dumping. Finally we will give you a little bit the idea of the numerical integration algorithm to explain why the precise time step could improve the simulation result. So far we used Euler method in the simulations. The algorithm can be described by this equation, saying that the value of y at next time step is given as a sum of the current y value plus a difference, calculated by time step interval, delta t, times the change ratio at the current time. So if the time step is large, the error between the estimated y value at next time step and the real value, red curve, becomes large. Conversely, the smaller the time step is, the smaller the error becomes, especially the change in the real solution is rapid, like dashed blue curve, the smaller time step is required to estimate the solution accurately.